Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for cost optimization and managing your spend in Azure. Uh, before we begin the webinar, just a couple of housekeeping notes. If you have a question, please enter it into the questions pane, and we will try to answer as many of those as we can at the end of the presentation. Um, and if you encounter any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat, and we'll, we'll try our best to help you resolve those. Um, so joining us today is Chandler Tomlinson, our Solutions Director for 3Cloud's Managed Services Practice, and he's got several other of our managed services um, team members here today to share some uh, great information with you. So with that, Chandler, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Doreen, and good morning, everybody. It's uh, it's great to be here. Appreciate everyone tuning in here. Um, today, we're going to be going over a very, very important topic. I think probably the most important topic for everybody when we start talking about Azure, and that's kind of cost optimization and how you manage your spend in Azure. Um, if you guys have been in Azure for a while or you're just starting or, you know, wherever you are in your Azure journey, um, I think everybody generally finds out really quickly that Azure spend can be really complex and it's really easy to see a bill just skyrocket out of nowhere or you spend way more than you end up expecting to spend. So um, really want to dive into why that happens, how to prevent it, what you can do um, and kind of take preventative steps. Uh, and then, of course, talk a little bit about kind of how 3Cloud can help you and how we can you know, how we perform services like these, or at least empower you to, to do this yourself. So as Doreen mentioned, uh, we've got kind of an all-star panel here from our managed services crew here. Um, I'll kind of start uh, in order, uh, starting with Chris Bauer. Uh, Chris is our operations director for managed services, so very technical focused, kind of knows the ins and outs of Azure and, and how to manage Azure. Uh, we also have Manny Sheth on here, who's one of our lead service delivery managers at 3Cloud. Uh, can kind of look at him as kind of a, a, a customer success role, you know, service delivery, ensuring that the accounts are operating the way that they need and the customer's happy, um, and really diving through this spend type of stuff. So Manny's going to be the one giving our demos a little bit later. Uh, we've also got Mark Nelson on the phone, who's our VP of managed services, and then Nick Moncom, who is uh, also operations and kind of a, a mix of service delivery manager and operations. So he's got experience on both. So uh, we've got an absolutely awesome crew here today. Um, to answer any questions uh, about spend, about Azure, about managing Azure, things like that. So feel free to, uh, you know, just pop it in chat and we've, we've definitely got the right people on the phone to answer it here. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump in and kind of talk about what we, we plan to cover today. Um, when it comes to cost optimization and managing spend, the, the way that the, the, what we like to call it is financial operations or FinOps. So this word's becoming more and more popular, but it's all about kind of how you can turn your spend into a more operational process rather than just, oh, we got a bill, surprise. Um, and there's kind of three pillars of success to financial operations in, in Azure, uh, and that's reporting, optimization, and then governance, uh, probably the most important one toward the end there. Like I said, we're going to dive into some demos with Manny uh, going through Azure cost management uh, and Azure Advisor, if you guys are familiar with those. Uh, and then we're also going to show a demo of a, kind of an internal tool we have called 3CMP. So this is a really neat tool uh, to dive farther uh, into cost than kind of your typical Azure cost management or advisor. Uh, finally, we're going to talk licensing in Azure, a very important topic on how you buy your licenses and what your subscriptions look like. And then finally, of course, how 3Cloud can help, and, and we'll wrap it up with a QA. and a So again, would, really would love to hear some questions at the end of this. So I'll just dive in right here and kind of talk what is financial operations in Azure. Um, FinOps is the act of implementing initial processes and ongoing processes. That's very, very important that it's both. Um, so we talk about processes, we talk about tools, and we talk about techniques. And there's really two key points here. Um, financial operations and cost optimization is not just about reducing overspending. It's also about increasing the value that you're getting from Azure. If you're getting terrible performance in Azure, but you're saving a ton of money, no one is really going to be super excited about that. If, if you're going to spend 100 extra dollars, but you're going to double your performance, that's great news. We consider that cost optimization. So it's all about value and spending. It's really important to keep both of those in mind. Um, classic Gartner quotes here. Um, clients that make a mistake in their cloud adoption uh, are generally unaware of that mistake. Um, and they're going to overspend by around 20 to 50%. So again, you migrate to the cloud. Um, you perform some type of lift and shift or migration, you're going to overspend hugely in the first 18 months. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, we do a, a tool called 3Cloud 360, where we kind of dive into what it's going to look like for a client to move to the cloud. And you can kind of see kind of good, better, best on the, the amount of overspend you can do if you're not aware of this. So if anyone's considering something like that, it's definitely important to keep that in mind, that if you just 
move things to the cloud or you just start turning things on in Azure without thinking about optimization, you're going to overspend. Um, and the reason you're going to overspend is because Azure spend is complex. Uh, I mentioned this on the start of the call, like it, it, there's about a million ways to spend money in Azure and there's about a million ways to save money in Azure. And managing that spend is a lot easier said than done. So you, you're going to have questions, you know, as things spin up, as you create things, as you move things, um, you're going to wonder like, well, am I doing this the best way? Should I be moving this to, you know, a certain cluster or a certain region? Should I be sizing this in a certain way? You're always going to have questions about that. Um, and on top of that, your environment is constantly changing. There's going to be things retired. There's going to be new things. There's going to be things changed. And so you constantly have to ask these questions over and over and over again. Otherwise, it gets out of control. I always talk about the kind of natural entropy and chaos that an environment can go through. Uh, even, you know, coming fresh off a of migration, you can have this really, really nice, pristine, perfect environment where your spend is perfectly optimized. Your performance is completely optimized. And really all it takes is, you know, one person being in a hurry to kind of start that entropy. Uh, down the line and kind of speed that process up into chaos. Um, and most importantly, kind of optimizing spend in Azure, it, it takes deep specialization. There's, like I said, there's a million ways to save money in Azure, and you kind of have to know about all of these. You can save some money doing one or two things, but it's knowing about all of these things that you really start to dive into things that maybe you never would have thought of, uh, maybe you didn't know about. And so you have to truly understand Azure. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to change this because it saves us money. I, I checked the, the cost estimator. Well, what, what repercussions does that have down the line for your environment? So as I mentioned, there's really three pillars to success here. Um, all three of these need to happen for you to really implement a successful financial operations program in Azure. Um, reporting, optimization, and governance. So I'm going to start with reporting here. So before you can really start putting FinOps in, before you can really start saving money, there's really two things you need to know. The, the first is, what does my organization look like right now? What's the current state of my organization? And two, what are the future needs of my organization? Here we are now, what's the roadmap? What's the, the we always call it an Azure journey. What does my journey in Azure look like? What, what do I need to develop in order to satisfy the needs of the business right now? Uh, Azure has a really great built-in tool called Azure Cost Management. Um, this is a great place to start for reporting on your Azure environment. You can do some really neat reports, you can do budgets, you can do spend alerts so that you don't get that surprising oh no, my bill is significantly more than I thought it would be. Really great tool to set up there. Um, that said, Azure Cost Management or ACM, it does require expertise to set up effectively. Anyone can kind of set up you know, a budget or a spend alert, but it doesn't necessarily have what we call canned reporting. So this idea of like, hey, I wanna do this, why is there not just a drop down template that I can select out of, of cost management? You kind of have to build all of those yourself. Um, and that's why we recommend adding kind of third-party tooling or services on top of it. So it's important, you know, kind of this idea that it's not Azure Cost Management versus third-party tooling, it's Azure Cost Management and third-party tooling. Um, there's a lot of really great stuff out there. Um, Cloud Health is the one that most people are familiar with. 3CMP is our version of it. Um, but there's, there's numerous third-party tools. Everybody's kind of got their own flavor. Um, these sit on top of Azure Cost Management and, and the native Azure tools. And they really provide an enhanced uh, view and, and it's all it's it's both enhanced and simplified so not only are you going to be able to report easier you're going to be able to act on those reports a little easier um, and then of course you know we, we have to say it, working with a managed service provider is a fantastic way um, to both kind of help out with Azure cost management but also get access to premium tooling uh, most managed service providers are going to have some sort of premium tools and your organization should leverage that if, if your managed service provider whether it's us or somebody else has access to one of these tools say hey teach me how to use this. Um, please show me how to get into it. Please show me what I can do in this because it's going to help a lot in the future. Uh, I always throw in like, hey, accounting teams. Um, your accounting teams are likely not Azure administrators. So it's important to, to figure out ways to get your accounting teams plugged into tools like this and, and really simplified. Um, and then again, kind of a, a really important note here at the end, you can't just report on the data. Um, you need to realize what the requirements are. You need to perform a full analysis on those requirements and think, what are we reporting on? Why are we reporting on this? And kind of think the purpose of the reporting itself. Here's kind of a quick example uh, of, you know, what we as 3Cloud do from a reporting perspective. Again, you're going to have your own flavor of this, but this is, this is a great way to just say like, hey, you know, VM spend is down from January to March. Why? Has anybody looked at this? What are we doing differently? Uh, has anybody complained about performance lately? Because clearly we've we've either dropped VMs or we've dropped some, you know, we've 
we dropped the, the performance of the VM. Is that causing any problems? No, great. Okay, this is this is great news. And so while this may just look like you know you can look at this every month and say, okay, cool, I, I knew about most of this. That that's great. But what these really do is create conversations. Uh, one of my favorite sayings in managed services and, and Azure in general is, we don't know what we don't know. And a lot of times spinning up graphs like this, reports like this kind of helps you know what you may not know. And so sitting through a call with, you know, five of your stakeholders or five of your IT team and saying, hey, let's look at this chart real quick and just read our discoveries. What does that tell us? Uh, you know, a, a five minute call can turn into an hour call just from looking at this because people are going to realize things that maybe they wouldn't have. So you have reporting done. You have Azure cost management hooked up. You have a third party tool. You've identified the demands of the organization. You've identified what you have now. You've identified where you're going. Let's find the best possible solution to this. Um, a lot of people want to start here. Um, they just say, well, hey, let me go dig into Azure Advisor. Let me go dig into you know, what reserved instances I can buy. That's great. Uh, we kind of recommend taking the, the reporting step first, but Azure Advisor is a really great tool. Um, but for, for those unaware, it kind of identifies your environment, looks into it and makes kind of these, these broad recommendations of what you can do. Um, it takes a look at kind of your usage patterns. It takes a look at how long was this VM, VM on? Um, how long has this VM been on um, type of thing? And can we buy an RI for this? Can we right size this machine to do something different? Um, Azure Advisor is an algorithm. It doesn't know your business. It doesn't know your team. It doesn't know why that VM has been on that long. So we always say that Azure Advisor is a clue to investigate. If Azure Advisor, if Advisor says something, you should go look into that. But it's not just a approve all on Azure Advisor. You really need to look at that and identify why it's making those recommendations. And so there's really three different ways to optimize in Azure, kind of three high level categories. The first one is consolidation. So can we take kind of this large grouping of VMs or large grouping of resources and combine them into a single larger one? Can I take three, you know, one SKUs and make one two SKU and achieve the same exact performance, the, the same exact result. Um, there's also a really neat program uh, in Azure called AHUB or Azure Hybrid Usage Benefit. Uh, this is where you can kind of double dip on your licensing. So if you have like an on-prem license and an Azure license, you don't need to double pay for those licenses. So digging into things like that, being able to consolidate both licensing and resources is huge. Secondly is reduction. So can we right size resources? You know, I mentioned kind of a one SKU or a two SKU. Um, if you have a ton of two SKUs, why? Are you sure that you need those? Can we drop those all down a level? Um, so it's really reducing that overall footprint. Um, and it's also about locating and removing zombie or orphaned or unused resources is kind of the, the terms to get thrown around here. So you may have a machine that's just been sitting on for months uh, and somebody just forgot to decommission it. Uh, it's locating things like that that's huge. I'm, Kind of reducing that overall footprint that you may not have known about so digging it being able to dig into those things and then finally probably the biggest cost savings um and, and sometimes the most obvious but tricky um is what's called reserved instances or, or you know paths versus is so we'll start with our eyes so uh our eyes are kind of investment purchases that you say hey i'm going to be using this vm for three years um i know that this vm is going to be on for three years I'm going to tell Microsoft right now that I know that I'm going to use this for three years. I'll just buy it now, and you're going to save a ton of money on the cost of that VM rather than kind of having it pay as you go. You know, every single day you're you're incurring charges. So there's one year reservations. There's three years. Um, you can do a lot of different things with that. Um, if you end up not using the VM for three years, you use it for two. That's okay. It still generally comes out on top. Um, it still usually comes out worth it. Um, so these are really great things to dive into and generally where the biggest piece of your cost savings will be. Um, and then finally, just talking about platform as a service versus infrastructure. Um, uh, you know, as you build out applications or, you know, SQL databases or, or clusters or whatever you're building, take a look at like, you know, hey, is this better to build an infrastructure or platform? Can I just build SQL as a service rather than building a bunch of VMs with SQL on them? Can I look at things like this and figure out ways to save money? Uh, PaaS is not always cheaper than IaaS, and IaaS is not always cheaper than PaaS. So it really goes both ways, and it really just comes down to your individual specific needs. Another example of kind of you know reporting and how this really helps, um, just to look at this and kind of have the, you don't know what you don't know. Um, Microsoft sends emails all the time saying, hey, we released a new SKU. 
here it is. And most people will look at that email and just say, okay, thanks, uh, delete. Uh, but it's important to really look at your environment and say, well, hold on, can I use this? Um, so this is kind of an example recommendation we, we do for some of our clients where it's like, hey, Microsoft just released this new SKU. We take a look at your environment. We say, hey, it's got, your environment has all these SKUs. We think upgrading to this one could be a really big deal for you. You're gonna get better performance and you're gonna save a ton of money. Um, here's what it looks like with reserved instances. Again, this is something 3Cloud can do for you as your managed service partner, or it's something you can kind of dig into as well. It's something you need to look at. Um, it's not all about just, oh, I'm buying a new resource. What does that look like? What do I need to do? It's also about, oh, Microsoft's updating things constantly. How do I leverage that and make sure that I'm optimizing things from that perspective? Uh, and then finally, the governance piece. So there's a kind of big framework uh, called Microsoft's Cloud Adoption Framework. Um, and inside that cloud adoption framework, Microsoft kind of gives out five disciplines uh, for governance. And the two most important for spin management and cost optimization is really cost management, of course, and then resource consistency. Um, consistency is super key in cost optimization because if you do all this great reporting and you do all this great optimization and you don't put governance in place and you don't keep things consistent, things are going to go into that natural level of chaos and entropy that we talked about earlier. And so I always like to think about governance with questions, and it's constantly asking yourself, your team, your environment, the questions of, are we deploying resources the same exact way that we did the last one? Are we doing lessons learned? Should we be, in, should we be scaling horizontally or should we be scaling vertically? You know, what's the better way to do this from a cost perspective? What's the better, best way to do it from a performance perspective? And then, of course, you know, talking about cost management, you know, are we sizing things properly? Did, did someone accidentally leave a VM on that they shouldn't have? Can we automate turning that VM off so that this doesn't happen again? And then, of course, finally, talking about, you know, resilience is like you can save all the money in the world, but if you're not prepared, you know, HA or, or DR, are we compliant with those things? Keeping those things in mind. So it's really important to constantly ask yourself these questions of, am I doing all of these things so that I can keep my cost optimization and keep my spend management in a great place? So I'm going to take a breath here um, and pass you guys over to Manny. So again, Manny's going to dive into Azure Cost Management and Azure Advisor, which we talked a little bit about the on the reporting and optimization slides. And then he's also going to show off 3CMP, which is that third-party tooling, just kind of show, hey, this is a really neat way to enhance your reporting and management capabilities and things. So I will give Manny presenter here and hand it off to him. Yeah, great. Thanks, Chandler. Um, great. Uh... Great to, to, to meet everybody here today. Uh, as Chandler mentioned, I'm one of the service delivery managers here at 3Cloud uh, Managed Services. So yeah, give me just a moment. I'll share out and we can kind of dive into a little bit more hands-on. Okay, uh, so just the confirmation from maybe Chandler or someone else on the call, uh, if they could see my screen, okay? You're good to go. Great, thanks. So I think what I wanted to do is I wanted to start with Azure Advisor because I think one of the things is, um, you know, this is, a, again, as Shannon mentioned, a great conversation starter. Um, it's not foolproof, right? This is, uh, it's going to use kind of algorithms and such to make um, likely uh, cost-saving recommendations inside of your Azure environment. Uh, but, you know, you can't just kind of hop in here and take everything um, at its surface and, and choose to execute it because sometimes, you know, these things can be uh, false, you know, uh, false alerts, uh, false positives, uh, or, or just kind of picking up on some sort of temporary trend, right? And what do I mean by that? So um, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just actually uh, in, a, in a sandbox environment inside Azure, and uh, I've just kind of browsed to uh, Azure Advisor. So you can search for it here right at the top of your screen. And by default, you kind of get this landing page. And what you can see is Azure Advisor is actually designed for much beyond just cost uh, reporting. Um, you know, it has recommendations around security, performance, reliability. You can attempt to um, calculate your advisor score and then kind of track your score over time as you've made, uh, you know, uh, improvements in your environment. Uh, but obviously, this webinar is focused around cost. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click into this kind of uh, cost window. And what you'll see here is, again, a lot of built-in recommendations that you can kind of see um, coming out of the, the portal that will tell you uh, exactly what you can do uh, and then how much you potentially save and you know what's the impacted uh, resources um, one thing i will mention just as a tip um, is you know oftentimes these tools will be filtered off of 
uh, your directory, your subscription. So um, if you're not kind of seeing as much as you expect to see, or it doesn't seem like um, it, it's a complete analysis for whatever reason, one tip is that at the very top of your screen, you may have only one of your multiple subscriptions selected, or you may be in a different directory if you've got like multiple environments or multiple tenants. So always keep in mind kind of, you know, which context are you in, what are you filtered into, and so on. Uh, but in this case, you know, let's say if I just wanted to see this top one that says buy virtual machine reserve instances, uh, again, as Chandler mentioned before, um, you know, reserve instances are a great opportunity to save on your consumption uh, spend. Um, and one of the things I'll add to uh, everything that had been mentioned is that, you know, um, again, you don't have to think of it as a full three-year commitment. Um, not only is there kind of a break-even period, so let's say you have a, a handful of virtual machines um, that you know, oh, you know, we're kind of working on a migration, uh, you know, these resources are only spun up temporarily. Well, everybody here at 3Cloud can tell you the number of times we've heard that, and then a year and a half later, we're still talking about those resources. And so when you look back, you kind of thought, hey, I could have easily bought a one-year RI because I've exceeded that time frame, um, but I could have maybe even stretched myself to the three-year RI, and I say that, because again, there is a break-even point uh, for every uh, reserve instance, but even beyond the break-even point, the thing you want to think about with reserve instances is their flexibility. So uh, first and foremost, you know, not only are we looking at RIs that are oftentimes sold on a monthly basis, um, but uh, which means, you know, you're only making, uh, even though you make a three-year commitment or a one-year commitment, in terms of dollars, you're only making payments once a month. So, um, you know, I think early in the days of cloud and early in the days of Azure reservations, you would only have options to pay up front, right? So you would kind of need the cash to make a three-year commitment and gain the benefit of the discount, that's no longer the case. You can pay for these on a monthly basis. Um, and what that does is it also adds to the flexibility. So coming back to our scenario, even if I bought a three-year reserve instance and uh, we're 18 or 20 months in, and you know now we're no longer using that reserve instance, you have options to exchange reserve instances as well as potentially refund reserve instances. And there's some stipulations there that you know, again, generally speaking, you want to work with your Microsoft rep or a partner like 3Cloud to kind of go through all of the, the, the details. But at a real high level, um, you can always exchange RIs as long as you're not uh, kind of lo losing money on the exchange. So at the end of the day, if you had, you know, B1 in East that you have purchased and it's dropped in utilization, you can decide if it's, you know, let's say it's $300 a month. As long as what you're returning and then buying is more or equal than the uh, previous transaction, then they'll allow you to execute that, that exchange. So that's really, really neat. And then last but not least, there's also a refund option. So let's say for whatever reason, a major change happens, you can't uh, find a scenario where you can swap out a uh, reservation to uh, exchange, you can refund. Uh, you do have a 12 month uh, rolling cap uh, for your environment of $50,000. So that is something to keep in mind. Again, uh, won't dive too much into the details there. there there's workarounds, there's, a, there's an approach as to how we handle those things um, and exceptions that even can be made in, in some unique scenarios. Uh, but generally, you know, working with uh, Microsoft or uh, a partner like us um, will, will help you navigate through that. So yeah, this is one example of just, again, advisor making uh, reserve instance recommendations. But it's well beyond reserve instances, right? So now we have reserve instances not only for virtual machines, but you can reserve capacity of data warehouse, you can reserve capacity for storage, um, for SQL, uh, and all kinds of uh, other types of resources. So that's the real, again, advantage is, you know, how do you stay on top of these things? How are you going to read every, you know, uh, article that Microsoft releases? It may be very difficult, right? Um, so this is one way where you can kind of hop into an interface and automatically see um, built-in recommendations that are uh, uh, looking at your environment, right? So just because um, a new feature has been released for cost savings doesn't mean it's going to show up here. This tool is looking at your subscription, your resources, and making these recommendations. So uh, again, starting point, great conversation starter. Uh, validating this is, is where it, it kind of gets a little bit more tricky, right? So for example, you may have right sizing recommendations in here and may tell you this particular VM, you know, can be shut down because we're not seeing any usage based on the last seven days. Well, again, that's not a perfect analysis, right? You may say, well, we've actually expected this to be shut off for 
this past week because it was the holidays. And now next week that server is going to be used again, so I can't afford to shut it down, right? So this could be something that maybe I want to go in here and just dismiss, um, or I could even elect to postpone something to see if you know that recommendation still is active, you know, a couple of weeks from now. Uh, but this is a, a scenario where again, um, not everything out of Advisor is black and white. Um, you kind of need to uh, do a little bit more analysis and think about it uh, to see if it applies. So. That is kind of Azure Advisor in a nutshell. Um, so part of the, the, the thing that comes out of Azure Advisor, again, as we mentioned, are conversation starters. So if the conversation now becomes, oh, um, you know, it, Azure Advisor is telling me to buy a bunch of reservations in this V2S size in the East region, your immediate question is going to be is, what what is that? You know, you don't know your servers based on their SKU size. <laughs> you know your servers by their names and their the role inside your workload and your environment. So how do we go look for this? Sure, you can start looking at virtual machines up here and start navigating by size. But one of the things we obviously, again, uh, are promoting here is that built into Azure is uh, cost management. So I've got that pulled up up here. As soon as you go to cost management, you'd wanna navigate your way down to cost analysis. Um, and then once you're in cost analysis, you'll kind of get this interface. This will be the kind of main area that I'll focus around. So. Um, one of the things, again, is if you do have multiple scopes, to keep in mind uh, that you have selected the right scope, uh, billing scope, that is. Um, again, if you have questions around that, I think Microsoft can help as well as 3Cloud. Uh, but in this scenario, I'm looking at a billing scope for this, you know, sandbox uh, subscription. And, you know, right out of the gate, you'll see a lot of uh, things that start populating. So you have this middle part of the interface where you see your current uh, cost. Um, you even see a potential forecast. Uh, for like, let's say the, the remaining of this period. Um, you have uh, obviously a, a dynamic graph here that I can kind of hover and, and look at very specific numbers as I as I go through different you know points in time. I have drop down options up here that I'm gonna show you guys here in just a moment uh, in terms of where we can take advantage of these. And then you even have three additional graphs at the bottom that again, by default, populate to various ways you can cut up your consumption. So uh, by service name, this is uh, essentially at a high level, what type of consumption are you uh, accruing? Virtual machines, storage, log analytics, et cetera. Um, you can have a regional breakdown by default, um, as well as you know something as, as, as uh, low as the, the research group level, you can kind of uh, report on here as well. So why do I like this interface? Well, one of the most common questions that will come up is again, you know, what, what, what's that trend look like? Uh, you know, Chandler showed a slide earlier that you know, for, for 90 days uh, based on categories, how do I see what spend has gone up, what spend has gone down? You know, you have a concept of what your total spend is, but you don't really know where your spend is going. So this is a great utility to, to, to go look at that because one of the things that I'll do right off the bat is again, I can group this trend by various um, sort of fields. Um, and uh, you know, you can also look at this as a uh, kind of stacked column like we did in that slide. So for example, in this case, what I'll do is I'll switch this from an area graph to a stacked column. Um, and then instead of even an accumulated, I actually prefer to go kind of monthly. And then now that I've done this, um, obviously this is loading, but now I can even kind of click this drop down and um, start picking a wider date range, right? Maybe I want to do a, a six month analysis or a three month analysis. So um, if I were to go, let's say uh, last three months, for example, you'll now see again, this shaping out to look a lot like the slide we were looking at before. And uh, to take it a step further, uh, I can group this, right? So I can group this again by location or by uh, so meter uh, category uh, and service name are fairly um, kind of interchangeable. So uh, one of the things you can do is just you know, service name like this. And what I'll be able to see now, again, is um, a very detailed breakdown uh, of my last three months, uh, where my spend was going, uh, and kind of what has kind of gone up and what has gone down. So uh, again, this is a, a great tool to be able to you know, uh, look at your spend in a more detailed view cut up your consumption in uh, multiple ways, uh, narrow down your consumption to, to really pinpoint, uh, I know I've spun up resources, but what have those resources actually cost me? So this is sort of a 50,000 foot view, uh, but again, you can keep drilling in. So for example, in this case, I can go and add a filter now, 
on top of this and I could say, um, you know, what I really am curious about is just uh, my virtual machine um, cost. So um, not only am I grouping it by virtual machine, but maybe I go and change my filter to only look, for example, uh, you know, virtual machine data. So I've uh, chose service name and now I've chosen virtual machines and I'll click the green checkbox. So this will refresh. And now what I'm seeing is very limited to just the virtual machine consumption month over month. Uh, previously, I had grouped it by service name, but obviously the entire service name is virtual machine, so this isn't really useful to me anymore. So what I would probably do in this case is, you know, I can actually get down to the name of the resource, the actual name of the VM. And so if I go and choose the group by resource, now again, if you're environment is much larger and you know the data we're looking at is six months of data it's a lot of data that this filter may take a long time so I would uh, certainly caution um, or expect to, to see some uh, spinning of, of the wheel uh, but in this case I have a small sandbox environment so I've gone to resource I could just choose to go by a resource group if that's a little bit you know broader uh, and then the other thing uh, that I can always uh, choose to do here is the tag so if you've actually been tagging your Azure environment by workload or by um, you know application, I can start looking at this trend data uh, specifically by the tags you've been applying to your environment. So coming back to this example, again, if I group by resource, now I'm able to see very specifically, again, uh, you know, kind of what resources cost me what uh, in dollars month over month in Azure spend. So uh, again, great tool, uh, very powerful, but one of the things that you may be picking up on is you have to have knowledge of this tool. Um, you have to learn this interface. You have to understand what you can filter, what's easy, what's difficult. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, you know, a, a great resource, but it's a little bit of a sandbox, right? You can kind of go in there, it's very capable. You have to know what you're doing and kind of build these things out uh, time after time. Now, there are some capabilities here where I can kind of save this view if I really like something. I can save this view so when I hop back into here, I don't have to click all of that again. Uh, but again, what we find is these analyses are, are very fluid. Um, you may be looking for one particular piece of information this time, uh, but the next time you're in here, you want to look at it a little differently. You want to cut it differently. You want different date ranges. So uh, again, it's very powerful, uh, but what, you, what happens is you'll, uh, you know, again, have, have to know how to use this tool and, and click through and build these reports out every time. So the last piece that I'll, I'll demonstrate here is again, um, as a client potentially of three cloud managed services is one of the things we do is we value Azure cost management. Uh, but again, it's all about all of the tools in your toolbox. And so uh, 3CMP um, is a tool that, you know, we'd like to uh, kind of demonstrate here that is included as a part of our managed services. So, um, you know, it's, it's web-based uh, utility and uh, ultimately what I'm showing here is by default, let's say, uh, I were to kind of log in uh, to 3CMP, what you start seeing is a very similar uh, kind of uh, type of analysis, very similar type of um, information, but all of this is populating on its own. So at the very, very top, um, again, we call uh, this initial blade of 3CMP FinOps, uh, but you get to see your last month's expense, your current month's expense, and then uh, an area that we like to focus on, uh, especially as to promote tagging your environment, is we try to track all of your environment that is untagged. So if we find resources in your environment that don't have any tagging, we actually kind of give you a little counter year. So again, this is a, an opportunity, a flashlight to say, let's go look at this. Why isn't this tagged? Should it be tagged as a shared resource or an application type or a function, et cetera? Um, and then as you scroll through here, again, um, multiple pre-built reports that we have kind of designed and built into various views uh, that we know our customers are often looking for. So a lot of thought uh, and energy has gone into um, building these reports, but then this tool, again, still has the same dynamic capabilities to allow you to sort of drill into it. So um, what I'll do here is I'll demonstrate that in just a moment, but just to give you a little bit more detail, this is our homepage. Um, we can kind of go right a uh, lot more detail into sort of cost monitoring. So if you wanted to start kind of creating, um, you know, uh, budget alerts or specifically to monitor the different types of costs, like we said earlier, you know, only looking at my compute, what does that look like month over month? Uh, if I want to look at, you know, just my database, 
the data transfer is a, is a great one where, again, this is sometimes information that's not as easy to find uh, within the Azure portal, but this allows you within only a couple of clicks to actually monitor the, the cost of the transfer of the data inside of Azure. Um, so that is the kind of cost monitoring area. Um, we have a blade uh, around inventory. And again, this kind of starts uh, across the different resources to allow you to actually go look at the detailed types of resources in your environment, report on it, filter on it, look at the cost, uh, look at the performance and so on. Um, and then we, you know, again, really drill into a lot more of the things we were showing you inside of Azure Advisor. So 3CMP is putting it all into kind of one pane of glass for you where, you know, again, we have right sizing options, long-term savings, and things like a wastage tracker. Um, so I really like the wastage tracker because, again, um, a lot of these are things that sometimes may also pop up in Azure Advisor, but a lot of the things in here are actually things that uh, don't commonly come up in Azure Advisor because Azure Advisor is really focused on very types of, very specific types of cost savings. 3CMP, for example, uh, will look for uh, unassociated public IPs in this case, um, low disk utilization, uh, you know, any RIs that are about to expire, this will kind of get flagged. Uh, utilization of reserve instances is out here as well uh, in terms of low CPU and, and, uh, and, and other things. So um, again, uh, this tool is very powerful where a lot of these things that we just talked about that you can find in Azure on your own, this has pre-built for you and uh, actually allows you to, to, to view really really easily. Um, so coming back into just kind of drilling in, um, if I were to kind of take our scenario uh, as, as we had before and look at just, let's say, cost uh, computing, um, I could switch this graph, for example, Azure cost over time to a stack bar, just like in the Azure portal. And then let's say this is good, but you know, really I'm looking for a different date range. This is just looking like the past week. We have, uh, again, a really robust filtering interface, right? So you can select one or more subscription. That's the equivalent of the plan ID. You could focus your efforts on just a region. Um, if you want to look at just certain tags, certain resource groups, and then here's the date range. I could say, let me just go look at the, the last month uh, and uh, kind of go through the, the remaining options and then hit apply, right? So once I do that, all of those widgets will kind of uh, refresh on their own. Uh, and then once this loads, I'll, I'll kind of show you how you can drill even a little bit deeper um, if needed. So, uh, for example, uh, you know, this report on the bottom is already populated as a pie chart, but I could, you know, again, flip this to, to, to look at it different ways. Uh, coming back to our example up here, um, this is not doing this at a daily level. So one of the things I forgot to do is uh, maybe switch this uh, as an aggregate of days. Um, actually, just you know, want to see the whole month uh, at, at a time. That's kind of why that graph probably took a little longer to even load, uh, but that option is there if you're interested in that. So um, one of the things, uh, so this is going to uh, load here, but one of the things I would like to show you is um, as this loads, uh, one of the things you can do is do a deep dive. So uh, if I were to take this information and say, okay, I see the different types of services that are, you know, accruing costs in Azure, but now I want to drill into, again, when it just says compute, well, what is this? What is this compute cost? Which VMs are costing me what? I can do a deep dive here, and so this will allow me to kind of uh, zoom in and start uh, looking through the various uh, dollars of these, of these categories or filter out certain categories. Um, but then one of the things I can do is I can actually look at the side by side. So I have my original graph here. Uh, but now on the, on the right-hand side, I want to drill in a bit more. So I want to click into compute, for example. If I click into compute, this will refresh and start showing me, okay, here's your virtual machine fees, here's your storage fees, and your bandwidth fees, right? So a lot of times you think it's only my actual virtual machine costs, but compute, co compute costs in general include other types of fees. Um, so then if I wanted to drill in, okay, well, which virtual machines? I could just click that, and this will refresh. And now I get to see a real breakdown exactly of which servers were costing me what in this particular month. So um, this is the, the, again, advantage of using um, this tool. Uh, uh, again, a lot more capability, a lot more powerful. Um, and the last piece that I'll focus on or I'll mention is that it's very customizable. So everything I've shown you here is what shows up by default. But one of the things we love to do is um, work with our clients to understand while we've put a lot of attention into um, what's here, we may not have covered everything. Every client has very really unique needs. And so with 3CMP, we have the capability to build very custom views and custom reports catered to each client's uh, potential need. So 
Uh, in this case, you're seeing the defaults, but I can add more views, I can add more reports, you can export anything uh, out of here, you can have it emailed to you on a regular basis, uh, and so on. So again, very, very powerful, and this, uh, this tool is uh, included as a part of your service fees with managed services at Thrive. So uh, I think I'll pause there, uh, Chairman, uh, if you want to uh, take back over, and uh, I will uh, uh, kind of stop sharing here. Yep. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Manny. And yeah, we're going to have a, a Q&A folks here in uh, probably about five minutes. we got a couple more slides. And so if you want to dig into anything that Manny went over, um, I'm sure he's he's happy to do that. Uh, so so thanks, Manny, for, for showing that out. And uh, let me get the sharing back here. Can you pass me back, uh, presenter Manny? Yes, sir. If you can confirm for me, I'm all good here. Looking good, John. Sorry. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. So again, thank you, Manny, for diving into that. Uh, there's going to be questions at the end if you guys want to want to follow up any farther into that. But uh, wanted to follow up with kind of a, a couple final slides here um, that dig into kind of the the nuts and bolts of how you buy Azure and how you support Azure. Um, one of the big pieces is uh, subscription type. So there's kind of a few ways that Microsoft goes about this. The the first one and the most basic is what we call pay as you go. And that is yeah, I slapped a credit card down on Azure and that's what's covering my Azure costs right now. Um, all the machines are just charged to that credit card. I get a bill at the end of the month that's based on how much I use that month, done. Um, you get kind of like this free level of Microsoft support, but that's really it. The other two kind of upgraded models uh, are what we call CSP and then a MCA or EA, uh, which is Microsoft Customer Agreement and uh, Enterprise Agreement, um, or Microsoft Cloud Agreement. So CSP is very, very partner focused. Um, this is where the partner itself, such as us, uh, a few other really, really large players are like CDW or SHI. Um, we own the subscription. So we're the ones with essentially our credit card on file um, and we send the bill to you from there. So you need something new, you just contact us. Um, that means that the partners are your kind of single point of contact. They're your first line of defense in Azure. So rather than calling Microsoft up, you typically call your partner and say, hey, I have this issue. What do we want to do about it? The most important part of CSP, and this is something that 3Cloud, of course, does. Um, and if you have another CSP partner, you need to be digging into your CSP partner and say, hey, what do you offer as part of this? Is a value add service. So, you know, of course, managed service partners are, are getting some sort of cut from Microsoft on this. You need to make sure that you're reaping the benefits of that and that you're getting value from someone owning your CSP agreement. So, if you call up that CSP partner and you say, hey, I need some support, they need to be there for you because that's your first line of defense. Um, for us, that actually includes Microsoft Premier support. So, if you are three cloud CSP, uh, you call us, you say, hey, I need to escalate something to Microsoft. We run that case. We shepherd that case. We call our Microsoft Premier support. And that means that you don't have to pay for Microsoft Premier support because you get access through it for us. So uh, a pretty big value add from that perspective. Again, if you're on CSP currently, chase what that looks like for your partner. Everybody offers something different. We also offer some basic like monitoring packages and things like that as part of CSP. So just make sure you're getting value from CSP essentially. The alternative to CSP and, and pay as you go is that EA or MCA option. And this is where your contract is directly with Microsoft. A lot of times this will be resold through CDW or SHI. So you may have an EA through one of these companies, uh, but essentially your contract is directly with Microsoft. And that means that Microsoft is your primary contact. This is typically reserved for the larger accounts. You know, your spend has to be, uh, you know, a, a little higher uh, in order to, for Microsoft to say, okay, we want to put you under an EA or an MCA. Um, and this is usually packaged with some sort of unified support agreement. So this is Microsoft saying, hey, if you pay a little extra on top of this contract, you get access to our premier support. You can call us, we can, you can escalate, you can run it through here. Um, generally, CSP and EA are the exact same price. Uh, Microsoft will generally just sell services. A VM is a VM, it costs this much. That's kind of how Microsoft does it. Um, there are some discounts if you get really, really high into the spend, but generally these are both what, what I would call zero cost options. So you're not going to pay anything for these. So again, if you're on CSP, you should be paying more 
uh, than you would be on pay-as-you-go. It's kind of the same prices across the board unless Microsoft negotiates something different with you. Um, if you're on pay-as-you-go right now, hopefully you're not too big. Um, going from pay-as-you-go to CSP is not simple. Um, there's kind of a migration involved. And so in order to take advantage of that value add, you want to get to CSP kind of early on. That way the migration is small right now. We've seen some clients, you know, be spending $30,000, $40,000 a month in Azure on pay-as-you-go. And you're like, well, the migration to get this from pay-as-you-go is going to cost you a lot of money. We don't know if that's worth it. Um, so hopefully you start small. Or if you're building out a brand new Greenfield Azure environment, start it on CSP. There's absolutely zero reason not to do this. Again, whether it's with us, whether it's with someone else, start it on CSP. That way you kind of have uh, a, multiple ways to go from there. That way you're not starting PG. Um, again, 3Cloud is a, a tier one CSP. Um, very, very simple to go through us. We're, we're super happy to have these conversations. Obviously I have to throw in the little bit of a sales pitch at the very end here. Um, super happy help to help you uh, on your CSP uh, and figure out how we can add value there. And then probably most importantly is a lot of what we've talked about so far is this idea that spend optimization is complex. You know, managing your cost is super complex. And it helps to have a partner who's super, super familiar with that. This is something you can do yourself. This is something we encourage you to empower to do yourself. Uh, you should learn how to do this. You should dig into learning these tools. But there is always that extra level of expertise and specialization that, you know, a partner can truly help with. Um, our goal as 3Cloud Managed Services, the, the way that I always like to describe it is, one, you're on a, you're on a journey in Azure. Um, we don't know where you are in your journey. You're either brand new, you're halfway through, you're super deep in, you've been there for six, seven years, and you're spending a ton of money. Great. You still have ways to go uh, in your Azure journey. There's always going to be something new. There's always going to be a new business objective. Our goal as 3Cloud Managed Services is to say, look, you guys focus on that business objective. Mm -hmm. We want you to focus on the things that make your business money. We want you to focus on projects. We want your IT team to not have to worry about the day-to-day -day operations. Oh, if VM went down, your operations team shouldn't have to care about, care about that. Um, your operations team shouldn't be staying up all night or patching on a late, late Saturday night. Um, so it's really being able to let your team focus on these things. We, we believe in kind of this secure, stable, and continuously improving Azure Cloud. So we talked a lot about maximizing value at the start. We wanna make sure that you're getting maximum value out of Azure. If it's going down all the time, if you're spending a ton of time doing different stuff, in Azure and not focusing on what we just talked about, maybe it's time to bring in a partner so that you can focus on those things. 3Cloud is an Azure expert MSP. Um, that's a very specific certification. It's, it's pretty tough to get. There's a very rigorous audit. We are the largest Azure only expert MSP in North America, uh, potentially globally right now with, with a few of the recent 3Cloud acquisitions. So this is a very prestigious certification that we have. We're super, super happy to help. Uh, our managed services team is fantastic on how we can support you on your Azure journey and how we can you know, implement things like follow the sun and 24 seven monitoring and, oh, you need a new VM, cool, we, we can help with that. And we can put in customer success to make sure that you're doing things the right way in Azure. So again, happy to talk either um, separately. I think you should have all our contact info in the, in the webinar email. Uh, we would love to hear from you, kind of talk about where you are in your journey, what that looks like for you and digging into that and, Happy, happy to meet with you personally and, and talk through that. That's all we have for today. Again, I, I hope uh, everyone really learned something uh, through the demo and kind of the, the opening talks about kind of reporting optimization and governance. Hopefully there's something you can implement in your organization right now. Uh, but again, we're, we're always available. Uh, contact information should be in the webinar afterwards uh, and we'll kind of open the floor to questions here. Thanks, Chandler. As a reminder, if you've got a question, please enter it into the questions pane and we'll do our best to um, answer it. So our first question is um, about how do you get to the 3CMP tool from the Azure portal? So 3CMP is a tool exclusive to 3Cloud. Uh, it actually stands for 3Cloud Management Platform. Um, so if you are our CSP or you are a managed service client, that's how you get into 3CMP. Um, there are some tools out there um, that aren't proprietary, of course, that you can that you can dig into um, if you just look at like enhanced Azure reporting. Uh, but if it's something you that would be useful to your organization, we definitely love to chat and, and kind of give you a, a deeper demo or kind of show what it may look like in your environment for sure. Okay. Um, next question: Can you describe the process of changing CSPs? 
Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, Manny, you want to go ahead and take that one so I'm not talking so much? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think um, to, to, to the to the person who asked the question, I, I think, um, you know, it, it does depend a little bit on kind of what you're moving from and to, right? So there's so many different scenarios. So let's say, for example, um, you are uh, uh, already with a partner and you'd like to move to 3Cloud as your CSP partner. That is what we refer to as a CSP to CSP transfer. This is doable. Um, there's a process out there where, uh, you know, the customer, the legacy uh, ten, uh, legacy vendor and 3Cloud all work together. Uh, and based on the type of subscription you have, there's some nuances between whether you have a planned subscription or uh, a non-planned subscription with CSP. Um, if it's a Azure plan subscription you have with your current vendor, there's a real simple process uh, right through the Azure portal interface, uh, a utility that allows us to kind of send a request to move that subscription. The subscription would then just kind of change the backend billing profile um, and not affect any of your Azure resources, not require any kind of downtime or any kind of migration activity. Um, it'll allow that subscription to stay up and running, but just the backend um, billing profile changes from your current vendor to 3Cloud. Um, if you have a uh, different type of subscription today, if you've got a pay-as-you-go subscription or an EA subscription or an MCA subscription, there's again, there's different scenarios. Some that allow um, you know, a simple billing change on the backend versus others that uh, do require more of a migration of resources. So the, the one that, again, uh, we focused on and, and emphasized a little bit before is if you happen to be pay as you go today, uh, uh, or uh, you know, uh, even uh, MCA today, there is, na there is no direct path to 3Cloud CSP uh, without any downtime. You would have to migrate sort of resources uh, at this time, there there is no uh, solution. Hopefully, in the future, um, there is one a uh, solution just like we described from CSP to CSP, or even from EA to CSP. There is a path uh, that allows 3Cloud to move your subscription without any downtime. Um, this uh, is actually something that is not available to all partners. Uh, the EA to CSP path. Um, this is a a, a privilege that a 3Cloud gets as an Azure expert MSP. Uh, certification. So all partners uh, of Microsoft that are Azure Expert MSP uh, will have that option. Yeah, the only other thing I would add is um, licensing doesn't transfer in these situations. Um, you can repurchase it pretty quickly, but um, you know, 365 licensing, for example, or just if you're purchasing something in Azure through a license, um, Azure reseller uh, being CSP as a partner, um, you just have to repurchase that before you uh, move over, but not a big deal. Just wanted to make mention as another technical aspect yeah. of that. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think that's one thing that I always like to mention too, just Nick, that you said that that made me think of is um, customers can have more than one reseller. You're not kind of limited. So uh, we've had customers to that to that point where, you know, um, you may have an existing vendor where you bought, you know, enterprise licensing with 365, Power BI, doesn't matter. Um, and then you also want to have an Azure subscription, maybe with that same partner, maybe you're building a new subscription with 3Cloud, you can have multiple reselling relationships. Um, obviously, most customers prefer to work with one vendor and have a single pane of glass. If that's an option for you, then that's great. We can help you towards achieving that goal. Uh, but if it's more complicated than it sounds to move things around and you just say, you know what, um, what I have in Azure right now is just kind of proof of concept. I really like to build my production Azure environment with 3Cloud. You still have a CSP option with us. You don't have to move everything over, so. Great. Um, one other sort of housekeeping question we got, will you be sharing the deck from today's presentation? And the answer to that is definitely yes. We will send you the link um, with the recording and the slides um, in an email um, within the next couple of days. Um, and I don't see any additional questions for our presenters, so I'll just say thank you everybody for joining us today. As I mentioned, we'll send you that link with the recording and the slides within the next 48 hours. Um, and if you'd like additional information about 3Cloud's managed services or any of our other Azure practices and capabilities, please visit our website at 3cloudsolutions.com. So thank you again and have a great day. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody.